hello what's up graphics here welcome to my channel today i want to teach you corel draw this is a beginner friendly class i'll be taking you through the basic features of corel draw to designing stunning visuals without wasting much of our time let's dive in so now i want to start by launching my corel draw if you have it on your desktop like this you can come here right click and click open or you come on it and double click or you can go to the start menu then locate corel draw here look for it look for your corel draw in your start menu you cannot see it you search for it corel and it will come up and then you click or oh, click on it once and you wait for it to load voila our corel draw is here so now as you can see this is the corel draw version 2021 we'll have higher version and we'll have lower version we'll have, we'll have version I, like when i started as a version 11 to 12 13 down to version 17 and then so on so on but for the sake of this course i'll be using the version 2021 for now so if you want to download corel draw you can shut me up i will give you uh, tips on how to download corel draw without stress so now what you are seeing on the screen right now is what i call the corel draw welcome window and in this place you're going to see this white environment that is containing different type different features of the corel draw applications now as you can see here we have get started workspace and all of that but now what is new learning and get more so we are on get started that is why you can see all these ones here now on top of it here you are seeing coral draw 21 64 bit welcome window that is what i refer to as a title bar because this is where your title or the title of your document that you are going to create will be written and the next one is the menu bar it has the menu that will give you sub menu to different commands you are going to perform in this course now what do we mean by command command are a set of instructions given to a computer to perform a particular task while the next one is the standard toolbar which carries buttons or icons of all those commands you will be performing we also have a property bar there we're going to do more of this by the time we commence we open the corridor but the most important thing here is this very window this very window here now why do i say the most important thing is this very window because this is the welcome window and this is where you start your document first of all what we have here is a new document this is for you that wants to create a new document afresh while every other one you are seeing here you are seeing here our previous work we have done recently this is our recent work recent work i have done on this uh, on this uh, application so all these ones you can see here are work that are being done by my students on this pc and again the next thing i want you to know is uh is uh all these ones are templates you understand professional templates that are being done by other coral draw professionals now the next one you see is open document this open document is wh where you open already existing document what, I, what do i mean by already existing document is the kind of document what you have done before that is being saved into the system that you cannot find it among the recent uh, work you've done here so the only way to get access to them maybe if you have done this work a long time ago is by going to this uh this uh uh, open document and then you're going to find it there so that is on that guys the next one is what new new from template what we mean by template are already uh, done design that uh, Corel Draw has available for you to use so it's mainly for those that are beginners or those who don't really know how to find their ways around designing so if you want to open old document you click on open document and your system will open to my document file where you look for the ones you want to use and then you open it that being said let's get started so we're going to click on new document 
by the time you click on this new document a dialog box will appear this dialog box is where you set up your page your corel draw and documents now is you can see the first thing you see here is the name this is where you name the 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 the, 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 the work like so now what you want to do is to give it a name let me name it tutorial tutorial take note that this no this name in here does not guarantee that this work has been saved already that means we are going to save it later on in the design process or what by the time you are done setting up your your document now having done this the next thing you see you will see you see here it's saying custom what it mean by custom is, is that these figures we have put here is not uh is done directly by the user so it's like you customizing your your corel draw template what you want to do so if you don't want it to be custom you know say corel designer default you get and the default for me is uh is another type of paper which is a legal paper that said we have to proceed the next one is how many pages do you want this work to be you want it one page you want it, you want it two page you want it three page depends on the kind of project you want to embark, embark on so if you want to embark on a project that is comprises of uh, many pages you cannot increase your page numbers by increasing it this way using this uh, arrow or using the other arrow to reduce or you can easily type it in by highlighting this and pressing the number of pages you want but for the sake of this course we are going to use just one page now the next thing you see is the page view so by the time you have multiple pages it's going to look like this but now that we're having one page it's showing us that this is how the page is just one page the next thing is primary color mode we have two different color mode which is the cymk and the rgb color mode the cyk mode is a cyan magenta yellow and black that is what CYK, CYMK means why the RGB color mode is a red, green and blue these are the major colors that helps you to get all kinds of color in the whole world whatsoever color you are going to have in creating your design you're going to get it out of this color mode but then there is a difference between the CYMK mode and the RGB color mode CYMK are highly recommended for print designs if you want to create a design you want to print i recommend you to use this ymk mode but if you want to create design for screen and web i would recommend that you use the rgb mode because the rgb mode seems to be more shiny and more attractive on screen than when it is printed why the uh, cymk mode is more deep when it is uh, it is printed so when you want to design anything it's left for you to decide if it's a print media or a, a soft media so you now choose your color mode based on that the next thing you see here is dimensions these dimensions on this page you are going to see different type of features here where you make a choice now it's showing us custom because the dimension for this has been customized by your or to the user which is me so if you don't want it uh customized there are different uh, page size you can choose in this page size size dialog box you can click on this arrow here the drop down arrow and you are going to see different pages size ranging from a4 a2 b2 envelope and different kind of pages depending on what you want to do so let me quickly click on this drop down arrow so you can see what we have in there now as you can see like i've mentioned these are different uh, kind of papers you have so if you are used or conversant with printing uh, a good example of this is what from all this a series where you have a naught a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 and a3 extension down to r2 so you can see that this different paper these are different paper sizes that you can use for your design so it's now left for you to decide which paper size will you use based on the project at hand the most popular one among them all is the a4 the a3 the a5 the a6 uh, a2 a1 and a0 which are the most popular paper size every other ones are uh important but then i'm talking about the most popular one so let's begin with the what a6 
x is here is um, when you have to uh, when you when you divide a5 into 2 it will give you a6 and when you divide a4 into 2 it will give you a6 a4 is a popular paper that we we use for printing of uh, normal assignment in school and all of that that paper is called a4 paper and that side when you divide it into two you are going to have a5 that means half of a4 is a5 and uh, when you divide a4 into 4 you are going to have a6 that means a4 divided by 4 will give you a6 or a5 divided by 2 will give you a6 now we have a3 a3 is a4 times 2 when you have two a4 together as one it becomes a3 that means a3 divided by 2 will give us what 1 a4 and a3 divided by 4 will give us uh, a5 same way same thing applicable the higher the lower the number the higher the size of the paper it means that a4 is higher than a5 a3 is higher than a4 and a2 is higher than a a3 a1 is higher than a2 and a0 or a0 is higher than a1 so that being said that is uh for paper size now if you choose a4 for instance you can see that um this leader is custom has changed to a4 now from here we'll move further to the next box which is this uh place you have this number here these dialog boxes are where you impute your dimension for example but before you impute any dimension you should take a uh, note of the what the unit of measurements so now when you click on this drop down menu if you can see we have 210.00 mm so which is what the dimension for this a a4 uh, size by 297 mm so which is the dimension for this a4 size and it's measured in millimeters so if you want to have a, a different unit you can click here and then you can see inches millimeter peak uh, pickers or point points pixel d dots d dots feet uh yard miles and all of that depends on what you use to take your measurement these things are very important especially when you want to create a custom design maybe you want to design for a particular place that the paper size does not exist under these paper sizes so what you use to take your measurement if you use tape for example some tape are calibrated in inches why and the uh, and the uh, inches and what uh centimeter yeah, centimeter or millimeter then centimeter why rulers are calibrated in inches and centimeter so depending on what you use to take your measurement that is what you will now choose here so if you desire if you if you choose inches you can see that the dimension here has changed it means that inches is higher than what millimeters you get so how many millimeters make an inches that is an assignment for you to go and do try to find out inches is lower is higher than what millimeters now if i change it to picks uh, pickers or point you see that this number is going to increase because millimeter is higher than that that changes about 9700 but if you take it back to millimeters it will go back to 210 but then feet is higher than inches let me take it to feet you see how the number will reduce drastically you can see 0 0.6 something that was 210 so that is uh, about uh, measurement and then their dimensions so the next thing i'll show you is the paper orientation yes like now we have this a4 and you can see that the width is 8 while the height is 11 it means that the height is longer than the width side but then if you want this thing to change the rotation you can actually swap the rotation to this or this these th two things you are seeing here represent two types of orientation which is the portrait orientation and the landscape orientation so if you want if the kind of design you want is on landscape you can easily click here and then you see that the dimension has changed the width is now higher than the what the height so that's that so the next thing you want to see is the resolution dpi we have different resolution and what resolution do is to help you give quality to your work so the recommended resolution for every design is 300 dpi resolution at this level you can easily have a very 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 fine um, quality uh, production at the end of the day but then the higher the resolution the sharper the the the, the output of your design so you can see 
from the recommended towards to the lower if you use the 72 it means that the work is going to appear very very poor at the end of the day once you print it so it is recommended that i use the 300 dpi resolution which is the default but if you want to do otherwise then that is based on what you want to print you can increase the 500 600 and that is uh, your own discretion to figure out so that's it leave this place here color setting and everything leave it is do not show this dialog but don't click on it once you are done setting up your page like this you now click on okay so it will take us to the main corel draw environment where we are going to see all the other features so at this point i'm going to show you some of these uh things and then uh we'll call it a day so we'll continue from uh, the next part of it in our next class because i wouldn't want to bore you with so much uh, work to do so now like i told you earlier this is a uh, title bar it carries the title of the document as you can see we named this document as tutorial and you can see that now this is a change to tutorial then i told you about this menu here that this is the menu bar it carries what a uh, command under them that which is sub menu carry command if you click on this file menu you see commands this is new command the new from templates open command open recent and all of that these are the kind of command you find under the file menu of the edit menu where you have copy paste copy and paste pressure and all of that of the view menu where you where you decide where the ruler and everything you can see they are tick here they will have the layout menu the object menu effect menu and menu 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 like that so by the time we begin to design or we begin to do different things i'm going to explain to you functions of some of these commands in this uh, menu and you can see the window menu where you can actually arrange your workspace and all of that you can dock you can dock any of the toolbar through this dock here you can see different type of have color swatches color proofing depending on what you want to dock on your page then we have the toolbox where you add all your tool your your toolbar you zoom text and all of this color and everything so this is what happened on that window menu and all of that i'm going to explain this as time goes on but for now i'm just trying to introduce you to the color environment and get you familiar with the course now the next thing is uh uh the, the standard toolbar where you have uh, uh, buttons or icons of different commands uh, you can see this is the new new uh, new new file new uh, icon if you go to file here this new you are seeing is the same thing as this so corridor did this to make it easy for you instead of you going to file you can easily click on this and then you create a new document why this one is the open command instead of you to go to file and click open just click on this and this open command will help you to open a previous what we have done or our already existing document that has been saved into this computer so that is what we find these people doing by the time we begin to use them gradually you will get used to all the buttons now the next thing is the property bar the property bar like we say properties are belongings of someone so all these things you are seeing here are the properties of this page it means these are the the attribute of this particular page you are seeing now by the time we click on anything the property bar is going to change to give us attribute of that this is this simply means that it's telling us that this is an a4 page this is the dimension of, of the a4 page this is the orientation of the page this is the page uh, number of pages and this is the current page and this is the the units the unit of the uh, uh drawing the, this is the drawing unit and then so on and so for the noise distance you get if you want to move something how far do you want them to go it is at 0.01 by the time we begin to notch different thing on this you see the movement so that is that for the property but let me give you an example of what i'm talking about now that i've clicked a rectangle you see that the property bar has changed drastically some of these things are faded because i have not drawn the rectangle by the time i draw it you see that it will give me the unit of measurement and every other thing that i need to know look at it take a look at it you can see that it has shown us it's down the the the, the, the rectangle is a 7.992 by 11.00 this very one these are the features of it this is the property of it and all of that this one is the mirror button you can mirror uh this way or you mirror 
up and down but you're not going to see the effect now because this is, this is just a rectangle by the time you bring an image and you mirror it you see that it will face this side or face the other side or turn upside down so that is that uh, on property bar the next thing i want to teach you is the is, is this bar here which is which is referred to the drawing tool bar and which is which i call the heartbeat of a design it's more like a mechanic who cannot do without his tools his spanners so these are our spanners that we use to assemble our design or 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 arrange our design in such a way that it can be appealing and what communicating so that's that that's that for this uh bar the next bar i'll teach you is the scroll bar which is this if you want to move to this angle you use this and if you want to move back to this angle you're going to click this side then the next thing i'll teach you is this pages bar this is where you can add or delete your pages now on this page bar you can see that we're only having one page that is why it's showing us page one but you kind of want to add another page you can just click on this plus icon and you get it like this page one page two it means we have more than one page on this uh, document already let me add another thing on page two to differentiate it from page one now you can see that you can see that this is page one this is page two now you can see we have two pages already so these are the function of this uh, particular page bar and the next bar i'm going to show you is the document color bar here you will see all the colors you have used in your design this one is done to enable you uh match your colors and to avoid you to avoid using color that are out of context what do i mean by colors that are out of context uh, normally a beautiful or a professional design should not have multiple colors on it you can you can maintain two colors one color and not more than three colors that is my benchmark if i'm designing i make sure that i don't have more than three colors on my design mostly i use two colors but then but for the sake of professionalism i would advise you not to have more than three colors on your design this means that these three colors you are going to use you can use different shades of those colors but all the shades of the colors you have used and all the type, di different colors you have used are going to appear on this your document color palette this is where you can use this to help you easily go within the context between within the context of the context of your colors and not going outside so that is why this has been what uh integrated into the latest versions of corridor above uh, the 2020 2013 versions of corridor and uh, and those below them so now the next the next and the last thing i'm going to talk about in this class is the color palette you can see this is the color palette at default this is what you will see and this is from where you are going to select the color you'll be using on your design you can see that i have clicked this color and it has been added to my document palette it means that every color i use or i click from the color palette are going to appear on the what the document palette which is to enable me know that these are the colors i'm using for this design and i should work carefully maintain them so that is that about color uh palette so the next thing we'll talk about is what how to close your coral drop when you are done you want to close or when you want to save before you or let's talk about how to save before you close you go to file there and click on what save as or you can easily use the save button here on the standard bar by click on this save and then it will give you a dialog box you can see the name will give to our document from the beginning is already here what you just need to do is to locate where you want to put it but for me i want you to remain in the document folder which is the default folder where all the work you've done in corridor will be saved to so i'll click on save and then this work has been saved by the time i'm done saving my work what i'll need to do i'll have to close my corridor so my corridor has closed so thank you for staying around till the end and i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you do please kindly give this video a thumbs up Consider sharing this video so more people can benefit from it and then wait for me as I drop subsequent videos on Corel Draw Design. Thank you. Peace out.